What is good? We're back. Full tripoded. Tripod. Somebody's a year older. Happy birthday, Big Co. What's up, buddy? Two days older. Two days older. Then forgot the it was birth- your birthday though. Yep. Um, me too. That's what that's what uh well, that's what I was saying. You did. I definitely did. <laughs> yeah. Scheduled a podcast and then I had to break the uh break the schedule there. I was like, you know what? Today's my birthday. Not gonna be able to make it. Early onset dementia, forgetting things that you were supposed to be. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> Got no rebuttal for that. Jay Wayne, how's it going? No birthday, but I mean. happy birthday, Mister Big Company. <laughs> I, 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 I had no birthday over here, but happy I happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got, you have to censor that. That's gonna yeah, have to be, full little blur. Can have a little nipple on there. Yeah. Well, here's to you, Big Co. Thanks, man. Boom. Thirty-eight, running strong. Damn, you old son. You're a babe. Such a babe. Birthday, babe. Is that a koozie? That is a koozie. Okay. Okay. I hope I you're not it. drinking a babe beer. I found it at uh, J- old John D's Airbnb downtown uh, post bachelorette <laughs> party. This and there was a, there was a lot of. Uh, Penis, penis, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Every time, went with, the skinny, went with the skinny koozie that said "babe." John D should be saving all this penis memorabilia after every one of these bachelorette parties. He could have treasure troves full. <laughs> just, just be just uh, Jiminy Glick of penis memorabilia. <laughs> just, just open just, up his trunk one day and just <laughs> floor you with it. <laughs> Rip Van Winkle, just <laughs> ah! penis everywhere. <laughs> penis ass. Uh, well, I have a birthday in the house. It's, it's my daughter's second birthday, so we're on to the twos. Boom. Boom. We're in there. Oh, wait, wait till she turns years. two. Oh, wait till <laughs> she turns two. Kept another human alive for two years, so well, that's... I know. So that's, it's remarkable. All right. Well, enough birthday talk. Enough penis memorabilia talk. <laughs> Let's get this thing rolling. Today, we have a super flex a rookie super flex tight end premium full point ppr mock draft locked and loaded ready to go uh, a bunch of our patrons here helping us out giving us a, a nice feel they, they do a good job over there of mixing it up a little bit and giving you uh making making normally good picks uh this one got off the rails a little wonky off the rip but i mean nothing nothing super crazy here um the first we're going to just get the first couple of picks out of the way real quick um uh, so obviously trevor number one no surprise there but then pits we spent a decent amount of t- pits talk on the last non uh super flex mock just but it was still tight end premium so for for some more pits content we have a we have a rookie video and we have uh last week's video right off the rip to tell you why yeah maybe it's a little crazy but hey we're on board where there's a unicorn you draft a unicorn i'm not going to be too crazy about it. Uh, I'm not mad. I, I wouldn't do it at one, two in a super flex. Just, but not I'm mad, not, just disappointed. I, I would be disappointed that he went off the board, right? We were talking, yeah. you know, last night. We we're like, in one of these leagues, we got to figure out a way to overpay for Kyle Pitts because we got to get a piece of him. But it's just so sure. hard. I was like, I'm probably not going to get him anywhere, but but you can bet your ass in one league, in one of all these leagues, I'm going to overpay and make sure I get Kyle Pitts because I have to. I want to. I want him. I got to have him. Everybody like, wants them in at least one that's, league. That's what I'm saying. So these, all these uh, expensive, you know, Kyle Pitts purchases is that one person unloading for their league. You know, everybody yeah. wants them in one league. If you have a super flex league and it's no tight end premium, and then you know, say you have that second flex in addition to the super flex, the tight end position is so watered down in that in that arena, then that might be your one to not do it in. Like Jay Wayne said, I mean, if it's super flex and tight end premium, you want to take tight end, you want to take Kyle Pitts, wherever you want to take Kyle Pitts. If you, you know, if you feel decent about your quarterbacks or you feel good about your quarterbacks, do what you got to do. But just to realize where the value of the, the tight end position falls in your different leagues. And, and if you choose to fastly overpay because you want them, do it in the ones where it's going to help you at least, you know, more than the ones that is, then it's not. I, do they have super flex? It's not tight end premium. I don't. I feel like if you're <laughs> doing one, you're doing the other. Like well, everything like should it. just be tight end premium. Let me get absolutely premium. with the Patreon, the patron leagues that we started up two years ago, or some of the members started up, and I jumped into is super flex and regular tight end scoring. So um, hmm. that would be, and it's a double flex plus a super flex, which is exactly the leagues I'm. 
picturing in my mind as I say that the tight end is a little bit lesser valued in those leagues. Yeah, I like that. Good call. You so still have a good tight end. You still got a good tight end, but it's sure. not that top. It's not extra points. So this thing then continues getting a little off the rails to start it. It corrects, but you know, Jamar chase goes again. Um, there was a little bit of a hiccup with an auto pick with somebody here. It was a two minute clock. Wasn't in front of the computer right away, but DLF and Superflex ADP rookie um, has Jamar chase at one, three. So really not too crazy, but the fact that Kyle Pitts went in there probably would have pushed Jamar chase to one, five, one, six in, in most settings, but Hey, it happens. If, if Jamar chase was your number one dynasty guy, and let's just say this was a regular thing and Jamar and, and Trey Lance or Justin Fields was the other quarterback that went one, two, if Jamar chase went one, three, I mean, and he was the number one guy you like receivers over Najee Harris and the, or, or the Kyle Pitts, then it's really, you know, it's not that crazy. No, I wouldn't do it, but yeah, I wouldn't do it either. But he, Jamar Chase is fourth in the Superflex rookie ADP on DLF. So, like right. you said, not out of the question for something like this to happen. Right. Um, so if that if this if a draft unfolds that way, Trevor Lawrence, Pitts, Kyle, uh, Kyle Trask, uh, Jamar Chase, one three. What are you? Are you just? doing everything you can to get up to that one, four spot right now in a super flex league. You're just in full send mode. Just. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you probably, you, you, you got to send everything you can for one, four, but you might as well go ahead and start sending everything you can for one, one five, five one, six. one, six and one, just, seven. Um, go there with it. Because I mean, I, if you, if those are the two picks that go in front of you and you're sitting at one, four and all of a sudden you get a chance to choose between Trey Lance and Justin Fields, um, I think you got to feel real good about it. We've talked a lot about these different rookies. Uh, Jamar Chase has been the guy who is the first unanimous voted guy since Calvin Johnson uh, in the league. Um, you know, the, the post-draft, pre-draft process where they kind of poll all the coaches, poll all the scouts. He's the first one that says, hey um, – he the best. The, the, the unanimous, the he the best. He got the top five draft capital, goes back to his college quarterback. I mean, just wanted to say, you know, we throw him backwards a lot of times for the running backs, but he could easily be as popular as Justin Jefferson is this time. He could be better than Justin Jefferson is. I mean, exactly. I wouldn't be that surprised. Yeah. If he was better um, than Justin Jefferson. Which, you know, and Justin Jefferson's going to be neck and neck with the Najee Harris in, in most drafts this at this point. Uh, Justin Jefferson in the offseason would have been getting drafted before Najee Harris all day long, but then Najee Harris goes to the voluminous Pittsburgh Steelers role, and he's probably going to be right there at the end of the right. first round with Justin Jefferson anyway. Difference being that if Najee Harris comes out and puts together a pretty good season, he's going to be up there with Saquon Barkley and Justin Jefferson – most likely is probably going to slide back after probably having what most consider to be a slightly disappointing rook, a second season, even though it probably wasn't disappointing at all, but he's probably not going to quite live up to the expectation of what everybody thinks he is. So that's kind of the difference between the running backs and, and the receivers and how, you know, why we do push the wide receiver down a little bit, because it's, it is very hard to get those restock that running back room. Yeah, all and, Najee Harris has to do is play a full season next year, and I can't see him not being a first round pick next year in in a startup. And and he almost already is in a non super flex league. I was on the clock in a mock at one twelve, and I had the two one, and I, I should have taken Najee. I took DK, but I took Najee. I, t I took DK. I probably should have taken Najee as the drafts play out. It's so hard to get a running back later on, and there's just wide receivers galore. Way to get dry out there. Mm -hmm. Najee's going to be backs. a first round startup pick next year for sure. Good deal. So sorry to derail the question. No, no, you're Casey. good. Yeah, that's the, kind of what I do. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Try if you're it. if you're watching this draft unfold and you're sitting back some, this is a good. I mean, you you got to try to make these trade efforts right now anyway you know if you got a trade right. if you got a draft coming up it's i mean it's no secret uh you know if anybody's again in a super flex draft that they got pick one seven they're looking at the board they're like wow one seven is gonna be fun because there's quarterbacks at the top you know right it, you know not often do you get this many quarterbacks in a draft in a super flex draft usually there's one or two but not four or five and so now you're looking at this and you're like all right well Normally, my one seven is gonna would be okay, but I'm looking at somebody who could easily be the first guy that I wanted to take anyway. 
Uh, yeah. You could jumble those guys up, whichever direction you want to take them. You got a couple good running backs, got a wide receiver, got a tight end that everybody loves, got a handful of quarterbacks. And we, t- we talk about that on our trade pod- podcast all the time. You count the players. Right. Um, how many exactly. players do you like in this in this tier? How many players do you like in this tier? And in, in, in the Superflex rookie lab, rookie draft this year, um, I mean, it's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. One, yeah. one, one nine is one nine, one ten. If you're putting Mac Jones in there, you know, is where you should be just trying to get to that point, regardless of who, where, who went where and, and exactly all that other stuff. But if Trey Lance is sitting there at one four, I'm doing everything I can to get up there. I want Trey Lance over fields. Um, if you're in the one four position and that happens to you, do you trade back a spot and try to get something? Or do you want to, do you want to, do you guys have a strong feeling about which, which one to take there? I think short term Trey Lance would be probably set up better to succeed just because of the up and down coaching of the Bears. I mean, it's only been two, what, two and a half, two seasons since Matt Nagy was coach of the year and Mitchell Trubisky was running around for his life and actually putting up fantasy points and looked like a decent young quarterback who had room to grow, but definitely was getting things done as for especially for fantasy. And, you know, they like I said, coach of the year and the, the rails just kind of came loose and the, everything kind of he ain't even a bear anymore, you know, right? Like Trubisky's backing up old Al and he's in Buffalo like that. That really happened. Life comes at you fast. So, <laughs> it sure does. You know, <laughs> next thing knows? you know, you're missing money off your dresser and your daughter's knocked up. I've seen, <laughs> seen it a hundred times. times. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we got the stability of San Francisco and that gives you Trey Lance's sure. uh, short term. You know, it feels the floor feels better for Trey Lance short term than what's, you know, what's going on in Chicago. But I would be fielding the offers to see what kind of payday could be coming my way. And again, we talked about this last time we had a podcast. The guy could be paying you to move back and then all of a sudden he takes Justin Fields, you know. Exactly. Um, so you don't even know how that's going or who he's going to be taking. He may be taking Justin uh, Zach Wilson, you know. So um, good point. It's just I would I would Najee not Harris. I would not not pursue that avenue to trade back. I got a, I got a one, two and a super flex coming up and um, I'm super excited. I got plenty of good quarterbacks. I'm super excited to see what kind of trade back moves I can make. You can build a whole squad moving back far enough from the one, two, if you'd like. You got to at least get in those negotiations and, and see where they go and see, you know, you don't have to make, you don't have to do anything if, if, if and keep it cordial and, and see how they go. And maybe, maybe it's great. And maybe you guys can get to that point. Like we talked in last week where, Hey, you know, I got to know who you're taking before I make this pick. And maybe you can be there and get in the, 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 the trust tree there and, and tell them, Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. And, and, you know, if you, if you, if you break that trust, then you're probably never new in business again. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you at least got to get the, the, the band struck up and uh, some music playing and see if you guys can dance around a little bit and see what happens. Uh, Jay Wayne. Normally at the one four, I probably wouldn't be trying to trade back. But I mean, if if there's still two more quarterbacks left to grab, then Anna Anna two top in running backs. Like there's really no reason to not try. And you know, try we can, for a haul. You know, if sure. you have a good feeling about somebody, I'm not trying to trade back just for that. You know, random second round pick per se that you would do later on in the draft, like we talked about last week. I mean, you know, if it's just sitting. a spot, that's not the worst. And you, if you really don't care. Yeah, I mean, that, that's if you a don't personal care, preference. It's great. Yeah, I, I would like Trey Lance um, the most yeah. out of if I'm taking that one four spot. But if you don't, if, if Jay Wayne, if you're saying you don't really necessarily care. No, I want Trey two, Lance. Uh, I want Trey Lance. And, and like I said, I probably wouldn't trade that pick. I would probably take Trey Lance. I mean, I, I really like Justin Fields and, and we'll get to him. He fell to me at one six and I had a decision to make with him over Harris and it wasn't too much of a decision for me. I mean, this is a mock, so it's hard to not know, you know, what your team situation is, but it's like in a super flex, unless you just have like two studs and a strong third quarterback, there's no reason not to take the first four quarterbacks. In my opinion, I mean, take all these guys like Zach Wilson's getting pushed down the board for whatever reason, but I mean, he's got Kyle Shanahan's Matt LaFleur's off spring buddy. Like, well, the call and plays over there, like they can make any quarterback look good. And, and they're brought in a bunch of weapons. So, like I, I wouldn't be sleeping on Zach Wilson either. I'd probably be taking all those guys the, before the, I take. The problem is history repeats itself over and over and over again for the NFL. And like we talked about, we touched on it before. Odds are two of these four guys are going to be not great. 
I mean, uh, five really. We haven't even gotten Mac Jones yet. Mac so, Jones I mean, should be talking about this because I mean, Cam's not going. If Cam plays, I I expect Cam to play well. I don't expect him to play very long. If if he does make it through this season, I, he's definitely not going to be next year's starter for the Patriots. I hope he plays well enough to be the starter because um, I I think he got a really bad rap last year and he's getting a lot of hate that he doesn't deserve right this minute. Um, but I think between those five quarterbacks. History tells us three, you know, two to three of them are going to be bad. Um, right. Obviously, with the running floor that Justin Fields and, and Trey Lance gives you, we think that Trey uh, Trevor Lawrence has the least likely chance of being bad of any quarterback drafted in the last twenty years. Um, you know, so you can see those through. Those are the those are probably the reason those are the top three. You got yeah. the, the the running floor of those two guys, the Trevor Lawrence, then Zach Wilson's number four, um, four or five, whatever however you want to play it. It's, I mean, I could see after year on one, Zach, Zach Wilson having the most value. I mean, who knows if Trey Lance or Justin Fields are even going to play? I mean, if Andy Dalton plays fine and and they keep Jimmy around and, and both those teams are winning, which they have playoff caliber rosters, they don't necessarily even need to play these quarterbacks. So you might be sitting around waiting, which I'm worth waiting, but let's not sleep on Zach Wilson you, as, if, as much if, as people I, are, I feel like. Four to six weeks max, and that's worst case scenario for these two those two rookies to get in there and play. I think probably. I think four to six is probably. I feel like I. I feel like maybe you Jimmy absolute, G could carry. Yeah, it. I feel the, the like you absolutely could be winning. Could, right, right. Forty Nineers could be four and one and be like, how do we bench Jimmy because he's taking care of things and Trey Lance is super young. But I mean, I, I've been yeah. in Andy Dalton. Think, I've been in Andy Dalton's camp for sure. a long time. But the the, the Bears they, the Bears are a better team with Justin Wilson, Justin Fields running the uh, quarterback ship. Maybe week two. Yeah, yeah. If I, or it could be week one, but it could be four, four or six. I feel you. You know that they, they're they've kind of approached like they're gonna know. The Niners have said. I think the Bears have kind of said the same thing. You're gonna know when he's ready to come in. That the players are gonna know exactly. when that quarterback's ready to come exactly. in. Exactly from practice, um, they're gonna know. So, and but the, the, a lot of I know at least in San Fran, a lot of those guys do love that they got Jimmy's back, and and you don't want to lose the locker room if the Niners are winning by. You know, and Shanahan's done a good job of always keeping those guys competitive and fighting. And so he definitely has um, some panache, if you will. Even when um, the roster is just depleted with injuries. Right. And boys but, still so you don't, you don't want to lose them with a move like that, even though everybody knows Lance is the future. Like sure, if you guys are sure. winning and, and ever, you know, Kittle's a big proponent of Jimmy. And there's been just a lot of people outspoken about how much they love Jimmy and how great Jimmy's handled the situation. Um, but, you know, God, good looking gonna, guys gonna always get, get the benefit of the doubt. It's going to get tighter and tighter as the season goes down the line there for, for, for Jimmy and fields. Really. I suspect fields will be on the soon, uh, sooner than Trey, but um, I mean, or hell, I mean, maybe Trey crushes it and, and is starter week one, but um, what we know for sure is Zach Wilson's taking this first snap of the season. Yeah, we do know that for sure, but they, it could, ju- it could just be, we, we probably are, f- I don't want to say guaranteed, but you're pretty sure that it's probably not going to look great for for a little while with the Jets. There's a lot of first year everything going on over there. And and while I like what they're doing, Mm -hmm. we know that that P word patience is not something that uh, dynasty owners have. So Zach Wilson could just be thrown under the bus quickly. And there are certainly some circles that Zach Wilson is the two quarterback in this hole here. Um, DLF doesn't support that. And our mock drafts don't necessarily support that, but I, I, there are, there's guys in our Patreon discord channel who say, I want Zach Wilson over Trey Lance and Justin Fields. So there are those people out there. Um, But you know, the jets are, the Jets have been the Jets for a very long time. The only time that they've been semi-relevant was built on the back of a defense uh, with Rex Ryan. And, you know, I like what Joe Douglas, I like, you know, I love Robert Sala. You know, I love LaFleur uh, 2.0 going over there, but first year play caller, first year head coach, you know, I, I want them to succeed. It, eight and eight. Some people might see as failure and that, that it's that not great, huge. but eight and eight would be monstrous for them. And yeah, um, the under on that. But I, you know, Zach will, yeah. You know, I mean, Buffalo is better. Dolphins are better. So, you know, where the Patriots, Patriots reign supreme for so long, you know, it's just, still the Jets have an uphill battle uh, with the Patriots even be down down a peg from where they were. But there's still three really good teams. Now I love the roster that they're building in in New York, but it might be a minute. And dynasty fans are dynasty players are poor to very poor at at 
seeing the forest through the trees a lot of a lot the times. Of, a lot of times it seems like they're playing a redraft, and it's like, so, what are you doing? Um, so then we got, you know, Trey Lance goes off the board here. Then we got ETN. Then we have Jay Wayne on the on the clock here at one six. Yeah, and I I debated it for a second. I was like, man, I can't lose taking Najee Harris. Um, and and with ETN going off the board right in front of me, I didn't have to battle any Clemson demons or angels. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Fields has gotten some hate. Over the course of this draft, he fell in the actual NFL draft and don't you know, really get it, but I don't either because everything that I've done to look into him and it's like there's everybody talks about how hard of a worker he is and how good of a teammate he is and his dedication and and then just I mean, he's got all the physical tools. He's fast. He can he can get it done on the ground, just like these other quarterbacks that were, you know, elevating because of the footwork. And I just I Even love the go ahead, Biko. Sorry, I just I have even the PFF college stats say that Fields got to second and third progression at a higher and better rate than any other quarterback, and maybe him and Trevor. I think he's right over Trevor Lawrence. Um, and right, and some just, people want to knock him for his reading of defenses, and it's exactly just like, that's so. I'm not ready anyway, yeah, to while, do that. While and, PFF can save their opinions, I will take your stats. Right, yeah. please don't give me your opinion. Yeah, <laughs> just like Roto Worlds. Um, I uh, RIP. RIP. I still call it the Roto World. It's still Roto Worlds. Hundred uh, percent. I got to take Fields. I got to take the quarterback. This is super flex. What are we doing? I don't have a. I don't have a hypothetical team that's loaded with quarterbacks. I got to make the right call. And in super flex, you got to take the quarterback. And I just was gifted a, a Justin Fields at one six. And I mean yeah. that, that's a that's a playoff roster. Nagy, you know, we've had our qualms with Nagy, but he's going to open that thing up. They have a good running game. They have some talent around them. And. I think, there are, I think it's going to be pretty good. I'm excited to watch the Bears. I want to. I'm excited what this will do for David Montgomery. Love to see them bring in Morgan this. Moses. That will be huge. Stack that O line, baby. Mm-hmm. Jay Wayne said it best. He's gifted Fields here at one six, and the gay guy at one seven is gifted Najee Harris and Zach Wilson. See, like that's the whole like Casey was just saying. The whole first eight, nine, ten picks feel like gifts, and but in rookie drafts wild things happen so you really could get for some reason like this is a this is a mock and there's no hypothetical there's no real team to it like jay was just now saying but you know we had the discussion before we started casey said well wh- where would you have to be to not take a quarterback and for me it doesn't matter how many good quarterbacks i have I'm taking the first three are going to be quarterbacks. It's going to be Trevor, Trey, and Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. And that's, and it doesn't matter who is on my team. I'm taking those three quarterbacks, the first three picks in any super flex rookie draft, just because of what their value will represent moving forward. Even if I really needed Najee Harris, I right. still got to take in the top three, got to take those three quarterbacks because I can get more for them as soon as they're playing. Um, but like Jay said, you get, if you're in the one six and Justin Fields falls to you, it is a gift. Yeah, this is why you need to be in trade negotiations and trying to move up and move around in this first round because depending on how it, back and getting, you know, and, if you're at one five and you one three and you can move to one six and get a haul and you get a good high end starter just because somebody's got rookie fever and the guy you take at one six could be way better than a guy at one three. It happens every year. Mm-hmm. And and if you're so stacked at quarterback that you don't need to take one of these guys when they're available, this take them anyway, the because then that means there's probably multiple teams that are really struggling at quarterback. And so, right now, so, I mean, you could play that either way. You could absolutely dominate a trade here because somebody has to have them and you could basically be like, I'm either going to take this guy and you could pay me now or you could pay me later. This mm-hmm. is basically how this is going. Or you could just say, fuck it, I'm taking the guy and let the rest of the league be like, Come see me. Exactly. If you got one of those crazy leagues where it's an hour and everybody wants this draft over as fast as possible, you got an hour on the clock, you're probably going to end up taking the quarterback and making your negotiations later. If you got one of a smart league where, I mean, if this is in September, I understand if your pick clock is an hour, but this is June and May and July. And so your pick clock should be 24 hours in a rookie draft to have fun and give people time to do this. And if you have that 24 hours and you're sitting on the clock at one six and there's Trey Lance is on the board um, or, you know, one four Trey Lance is on the board and you're like, well, I could, I could take Trey Lance. I really like Zach Wilson. And my favorite is Justin Fields. Then you should use that time. Like we were talking about last week, you should sit there because it actually could be harder to get a good deal done. Once that guy's on your team, 
it, it can be, yeah, you know, you got to take agreed. advantage to, to that person. You got to take advantage of that person's uh, once he's actually on somebody's roster. Sometimes it's harder to get their little grubby fingers off of it. it. Exactly. So you get, you know, and oh, you wanted the guy out. I took. Oh, so that's now, now, now there's a romantic and, uh, He's already on your team. You feel it. You know, well, you are more I relationship. About, about, yeah. I was talking about getting the deal done with the other. It can be hard to trade away the guy that's on your team because obviously you fall in love with your players, but it can I, be harder to get a deal done once the pick is made. That's what I meant to generally yeah. speaking. They 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 now have a relationship with that player. They've seen him on their team. They've sat on it for a day, three, thought about it in the shower. They're like, Oh, exactly. I got this guy on my team. Exactly. That second or thought, you can't have deal, him. Shower thoughts deal with somebody with Casey else. Myers. I made a deal with somebody else, and they could do, yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that photo up that. No, I think that was. I don't even want All to right. say his name. All right, so one six goes off the board. That's Jay Wayne. That's Justin Fields. Then Najee Harris. You know, like you, like you guys just all hammered home. Like all these picks until one nine seem like a gift. Basically, goes, and then I take Zach Wilson because he got to. He's a yep. quarterback left on the board, and I'm up at at one eight. Give me Zach Wilson. I don't dislike Zach Wilson, but he's definitely my fourth quarterback out of all these guys. Like Big Co said, I'm taking those three quarterbacks pretty much over all these guys. I agree 100% with you. And then Zach Wilson falls somewhere in there. That's probably going to be a little bit more team build dependent on the Zach Wilson pickup there Okay. Um, for me. Um, and like I said, I do like what the Jets are doing. I like Joe Douglas. I like the way they're building the trenches. I like I like the, they, they've put Zach Wilson in, in the position that they should have been putting Sam Darnold in to be able to succeed, to put weapons around him and building that offensive line. You have a Completely stud left agree. tackle. You have a, a left guard. You know, they, they did some work in free agency and have had an OK interior built up there. Um, and you so know, the running game with the floor is going to be productive and could be good. Be yeah, should be that, good. So. Michael Carter, you know, I like I like that. And they have some other weapon. And, and then across the board, uh, skill position receiver wise is good. Corey Davis, Mims, All of a sudden uh, got Crowder, Elijah Moore and Herndon, you know, still there, still great, still athletic, still, you know, could be waiting for that breakout. Um, so, yeah, I like what they're what they're doing there. But, you know, could be another year before we really see them start to come into their own uh, and probably will be. Uh, so then one nine goes off the board. That's Javante Williams. Again, you feel nice about that pick at one nine. You're like, damn, I'm at one nine. I got Javante Williams. Hell yeah. That's fucking awesome. Um, and then Bateman and Waddle go. And then Mac Jones goes at one twelve. So I guess the next question for me is, well, before I get to any of that, like we're, we've gone through all these mocks multiple times. Uh, we're going to continue to go through these mocks for rookies, you know, a few more times. So we, you kind of have gotten our gist of all these players. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on too many skill position players, unless somebody really sticks out as good value. We'll talk a little bit about them and move on. But what I really want to talk about is now Mac Jones is at one twelve. Where, where's the, is that the, which player, which skill position player is in line before him until you need to take Mac Jones. Not baby. Is this, is this correct here, or how do you feel about this? It's too late. That's fantastic. Proper, That's fantastic or? value. That's too late, in my opinion. Yeah, Mac I mean, I'll, I'll probably just need to grab him right behind Zach Wilson. So you would rather have Mac Jones over Javante Williams in a super flex league? You got to. I feel like you got to. Now Javante Williams could come out and crush, and he could be better than Najee Harris and ETN, and that's not impossible. And you know that could be a bad take, but I just feel like the connection with Patriots and Alabama and Mac Jones is his, you know, his accuracy and everything the Patriots want to do. Smarts, um, potentially. I, we think it's what they want to do. His body with the shirt we're, off, you know, just, just screams Tom Brady, nineteen ninety. To or whenever he came out, we we right. Eighty two. Couldn't couldn't. <laughs> I don't know when Tom Brady started. Was it eighty two? I don't know. Two thousand one, bro. Um, ish. strong. Um, strong. Drop. That we think we we think that they would like to play a, a type of football that looked like they did when Brady was there. It only worked for six pay, six championships in twenty years. So we think that, that they would like to do that again. And Mac Jones gives even them a if chance they just scrape that. that. Even if um, they just scrape it. Tom yeah, Brady was the year the 2000. So I'm taking Mac Jones right there with Wilson. Over Javante. I think I might have to be, I think I'm okay with taking Javante there. It'd be a mixed bag for me. It depends on who's my third quarterback, especially I mean, who's my second quarterback for sure. And then who my third quarterback is could be, could make me go Javante or, or Mac Jones. I mean, if you got 
a, a wishy-washy second guy, then absolutely it's Mac Jones there at one nine. Um, but if you feel decent about your second guy, like we got Carson Wentz in the league uh, as a second guy, I feel good about him. I don't know how you guys feel good f- feel about him, but we traded away golf at the end of last year. So now we're sitting there basically third quarterback list and we're picking in the one seven or eight range. So we might not have to necessarily make that decision. Um, but it'll be fun when that comes around to, to, to hear the group discussion on that. Now we don't have a great third. So, you know, what's more important and adding you another running back, get which, third. which you got to try and get that third. We do kind of need another third. running back in that league. We, we kind of played, you know, a little bit of running back, uh, roulette. Um, and we, we, we had our chips a little bit on not, not too in on Lenny, but we had Lenny posted as being a nice RB two for us. And we don't know if that's going to be the case in that particular league. Um, now Gibson, we did been, trade for Antonio Gibson. No, no, we, no, we, we, we drafted traded, him. We traded for uh, Chase Edmonds, so that could be decent for us. But, you know, we're kind of in that weird position where usually we're stacked at running back and we're not quite stacked at running back. We have two quarterbacks that we think are going to be good too long. We got Russell and Wentz. So we have uh, what I think are two decent long term solutions. But do you want the third guy? And, uh, you know, what do you how do you fare in that in that in that real life situation there? Big Co, would you you still you you basically just said you're taking Mac regardless. So I think Mac's the answer for you. If once Zach Wilson's gone, I gotta take Mac Jones. Um, just you think about. Uh, Would you the, take him over Harris, Jimmy? No, I wouldn't. More than likely, based on team build, but I'm probably not taking him over to Harris. But I mean, if you if you don't have a second quarterback in a in a super flex, you got to Pitts, um, Chase, and Harris. You're taking Mac. You're taking those guys, and then Mac Jones. Correct. Okay. Uh, if, you know, if, if you don't have a quarterback, you can't even gamble. Like Mac Jones is going to be good. Like I'm not saying I don't know if he's going to be great. He's not going to be bad because he could be Kirk Cousins. That's fine. Why can't he be Kirk Cousins? That's you know? fine. Kirk I know. Cousins, I know. Kirk I feel Cousins you. Gets I... Eighteen points a game. If if Najee Harris gets eighteen points a game for seven years, he's one of the best best running backs ever play the game. You know, like if we if. Justin Jefferson averaged 18 points a game. He's the best wide receiver to ever play the game. Like that's a bad, that's a, that's a Kirk Cousins quarterback season. You don't have to be, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have to be Super Bowl winning quarterbacks to be better than Kirk Cousins. What was that moan about? You disagree? Me? Yeah. I was, I just had a great sip of water. No, I agree hundred percent. Great sip of water. Okay. Let me tell you why I don't know. Kirk, is, Mac, I, Kirk I don't, is habitually underrated, had a good season last year and still hated all Kirk Cousins. Oh yeah. Mac, Mac, let me tell you why Mac Jones Nothing is going to be sexy, good. But. Let me tell you why he's going to be good. I don't know if he's, he's going to be bad. I know he's not going to be bad and I don't know if he's going to be great. Um, Matt, whatever his name was that took the boys to the playoffs when, when, um, uh, Brady got his knee broken. Uh, Castle. Matt Castle, Matt Castle, Jimmy G, and barely even got to play, but two games and was trade worthy and hundred million dollar quarterback award. Like, obviously, Brady was more important to the game to game wins and on the field well, the way it looked than Belichick. But when Brady wasn't in there, anytime when he was suspended, Jacoby Brissett looked good. You know, like Mac Jones is going to be good. He's not going to be Brady. There's a hundred percent chance he's not going to be anywhere near as good Brady because that just that's just how the odds work. I can just bet my house on it. But he's not going to be bad because Bill Belichick's good enough. Brady was better and more important. I feel for them for the wins, but Mac Jones is going to be good. Yeah, I feel like you're in a Kirk Cousins to Matt Ryan could be ever could Matt, Very Matt Jones doable. could be Matt Ryan. Very doable. Jay Wayne, wrap that up. We'll put a, put a bow on that. Would you, in our real life situation there, would you take Javante Williams or would you take um, Mac Jones? I mean, give me Mac Jones. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So that wraps up the first round. Uh, then we move on to the second round. Big Co, you're on the board at two one. You take uh, Devonta Smith here. You like you feel feel good about that. I mean, Trey Sermon on the board, Rondell right Moore, all fantastic value. Terrace Marshall, pretty much the pick you had to make, right? If you if you picture the first half of the championship game with Devontae Smith as unguardable, you have to be feeling good about this pick. The whole year he was unguardable. I would exactly well put. He's a um, beast. And this weight thing, just get rid of it. I ain't worried about that at all. Yeah. The only thing if, if it 
the just situation. On the Eagles. Yeah. It's yeah. just the situation. I, I mean, I, I said it last week when I was talking about some things with Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Jalen Hurts could go out there and ball out, and it doesn't necessarily mean high fantasy points for Devonta Smith. Mm-hmm. I think Devonta Smith and Jalen Hurts combination with the Eagles could help them win games. You know, I think Devontae Smith could be so good that the defense has to really like figure out how in the world do we keep anybody near this guy because he keeps finding himself wide open. And I, I mean, if he's wide open in the NFL, then uh, Jalen Hurts is going to hit him. Um, so he could be, he could be great, but he could also be hard to be in a stiff submit your lineup league. He's a better know, best ball, non best ball, now. short, but short next term. year. Could be could completely be. different situation. First game of the season, he could break out and be ridiculous, and I could be eating pie in the face. But I just feel like it's a great situation. It's a great value at two one to be able to grab Devonta sure. Smith in the Superflex League. But Absolutely, I, I don't, no brainer. You no, know, over over all the other guys on the board, I just I, I just took them and said, hey, that's my value pick. I, I got to pick. Got to pick Devonta here. That was the pick, in my opinion. He gives you the uh, super flex advantage, if you will, because he's like having a second quarterback on the field, how smart that guy is. He's telling defenders what they're doing. He's going to the sideline telling OCs and telling his quarterback what's going on because he's that fucking smart. And he processes information so well, and he's so dialed into what's going on, uh, on top of being what, uh, to quote Jalen Hurts, the smooth criminal and he, that that's just what he is and where he's at. I think he's going to be just fine. Now the situation sucks, like you said, but I think that's the pick. That was yeah. the only pick. Let you me put made it, right let me, I say that just because that's the way I t- talk about fantasy football, but I'm pulling for him. All of a yeah. sudden I'm pulling for Jalen Hurts and Devonte Smith and, and, and Rager and Dell. I'm pulling for the boys to be great. Yeah, I just don't expect it for fantasy points. I can't pull for the Eagles to be great, but I would like to see Devontae Smith be good because I I do think he is. I mean, the talent is ridiculous. Like the smooth criminals, he's fluid. He's got that curvy linear movement, that bend, and he just, you can't touch him. You just can't touch him. Jalen Hurts fantasy points uh, on the other hand. Mm -hmm. Should be decent. All should be decent. Should be incredible. Trey Sermon 2-2. We've talked at length about all that. Uh, two, three, Rondell Moore. So you can go find that on the last mock draft and, and certainly other things. Uh, Rondell Moore, two, 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 three, Terrace Marshall, two, four, Elijah Moore, two, five, Jay Wayne with Kadarius Tony here at two, five, um, two, six. And, and two, I six, mean, sorry. I struggled. I didn't know what I sh- probably should have taken Michael Carter, but I just really mm. like Tony and I want to get Tony's name out there some more because Tony's a freak and this, no one likes the situation. No one likes the Giants. No one likes Love Tony. It. No one likes Tony, but he's a huge value. I probably should have taken the running back. This is a running back show. So I probably should have taken Michael Carter, but I still feel good about Tony. Well, I'm excited about it. Cause I would have either taken Tony there or uh, now Michael Carter was available. So I took him at two eight. Pat Fryermuth goes in between. I'm a little bit on the fence about that guy. I probably could have shifted him down a little bit more. Uh, it is tight end premium though, and JMW always makes good picks. That rap bastard is always right next to me and always just sniping me, or he's behind me on a wrap around and gets me again. This time, fuck yourself. You didn't really get me. I wouldn't have taken him. <laughs> um, but uh, so I got Michael Carter there. I like that. Um, Deami Brown probably got to push him down a little bit. A little um, bit. Amari Rogers, St. Brown, love that pick. That's good value there at 211. Chuba Hubbard at 212. Maybe he has Christian McCaffrey. Great pick. Uh, just talent out the, at the wazoo. Yeah, in, a, in a mock draft. <laughs> <maybe>. <laughs> talent at the wazoo for Hubbard. I think I think Big Cope said it best last uh, mock draft. I think I think I took Chuba in a non super flex at 212 um, and basically said, like, the talent's just off the charts. Why not take him there? Um, and I'm just going to take him and be be happy about it. Just hold him. So here comes the next question here. Now, we got a three-quarterback run here, um, which sparks my next and really last question for this Superflex show here. Where is the line? Is Which skill position players up here have to still be on the board for you not to go into the next set of quarterbacks, which in all regards are pretty much Kellen Mond, Davis Mills and Kyle Trask and kind of whichever order you want to take them in. I, I suspect that we all kind of are leaning Mond at the front of that thing. I have Mond Mills Trask, but I can't you know, do it. I can't do um, it. I'm going to go but, down with this ship three times in a row. Fuck <laughs> Kellen Mond. He sucks. 
the, buy all the Calamon you can. Like Jay, right. I think if I hate it, if I hate said the right that, quarterback, you better pick him up. Big <laughs> said that early on, and that's uh, that's probably accurate. Um, but so yeah. so who would be the skill position? Big Co, you were had to make this pick at three one. What skill positions could have players could have been there for you not to make the pick of Calamon? And um, well, I picked him over everybody behind, obviously. So obviously, you're talking yeah. about um, who was picked before you. Like if St. Right. Brown or Amari Rogers are there. Or Chuba or Michael Carter. Michael Carter's not going to be there. Friar Muth, Tony. A tight end premium, you have to look at Friar Muth because he's got a lot going for him, but mm-hmm. I've, it still could be two or three years just that the way tight ends work. Sure. I'd rather just go buy Logan Thomas and be done with it. Still have you um, on there. So, uh, you know, I um, – Kadarius Tony Tony is fun. Deomi Brown for me. Um, just being in Washington, uh, obviously Fitzpatrick's there this year. The ability for them to show me a quarterback that's going to support more than Antonio Gibson and um, Terry. Terry. Now you uh, throw Curtis Samuel, Samuel in there. In now, the now you throw Curtis Samuel and Logan, Logan Thomas. Thomas. Uh, mm-hmm. I, to me, Deomi Brown is is fun, and he's got some. He. Uh, to, there's, they have one right this second that could support all those guys, or at least a handful of those guys. But to long from term, week to week, yeah, right. from week to week, Brown could could pop off here or there. Um, but I just, you know, it could be uh, Deomi Brown could sit on your bench for seasons, uh, based just because he's in Washington, and uh, obviously nobody thinks Fitzpatrick's going to be there next year. I like the idea if if Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay, I'll take Amari Rodgers. Say Brown is nice, and the, with the f- lack of t- uh, wide receivers there, and what we said about him last time, reuniting with the guy who brought in Cooper Cup and put all that together, he's kind of could be that same. And Jared Goff um, could be the same type of PPR guy for the for the Lions. They're going to need mm-hmm. it. Um, probably going to give up a fair amount of points, even though they're going to probably play as slow as possible to try to limit that. Um, and run the ball a million times a game, they're going to have to throw it at some point. I do like Chuba a lot. That's why, I mean, Kellen Mond, if I was in other mock drafts, Kellen Mond, I'm taking him in the middle of the third round because that's where I was at, and he fell that far. To me, mm-hmm. I I've, I think, to me, I could do. I could take him in front of Fryermuth. I could take him in front of Diamond Brown. If if you have a draft and Aaron Rodgers is out of Green Bay by that point, I could take him in front of Rodgers, at Mari Rodgers, because of, they're going to be starting a brand-new quarterback over there. But if... If Aaron's playing in Green Bay, what about Gainwell? I, um, didn't I mean, look like in this Mon draft that Gainwell. you would have been afforded that luxury if you were in the middle of the thing because it did like a quarterback. You started a quarterback run. Maybe it wouldn't have happened if you wouldn't have did that, but it went boom, good point. boom, boom. Good point. Um, I, I like I like the I like the size and speed of Nico Collins. I hate everything about Houston Texans. Sure. Um, I like the idea of Kenny Gainwell. I hate the idea of him being any, if Miles Sanders is there and uh, just the. I don't think that he's jumping Miles Sanders. I don't think, uh, you know, so I'm taking my on there. Well, I know Elijah Mitchell's probably a little bit more of even a stretch. So probably sticking mine. Man, Cause I just had so much success doing it, man. I mean, yeah. I just, I just took, I just took um, Jalen hurts and, and the third round of a, rook, a super flex last year and flipping for Justin Jefferson, you know, I was on the Lamar Jackson bandwagon. I just give me the athletic quarterbacks. And I'm obviously Kellen Mond was on a first round draft pick by any means. And and somebody says a lot of people would have said last year. A lot of people did say last year, Jalen hurts was drafted too early. Um, but here he is a starting quarterback eight months later, you know, so get your second round draft pick on uh, Jalen hurts, you know, so uh, in the NFL draft, you know, so, Kellen Mond was later. Um, I think he was a third round pick, though. Correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all three of these quarterbacks actually went like bang, bang, bang. I think Kyle Trask was sixty fourth, which is like the last pick of the second round. Yeah, and he was a second rounder. Mond yeah, was so, I mean, sixty six, and and Davis super, Mills was sixty seven. In a super flex league, like I'm not, quarterback gonna, I'm not going to wait long to get Kellen Mond on my team. I'm going to take some of those guys through the second round there. That that Chuba are, was Chuba the is the Chuba before or after Mond? I'm taking Chuba. Okay. Chuba, uh, Jay Wayne, where are you at with that? Gain is it Gainwell, Nico, Chuba? Yeah, Amari, I'll take Diami. Where is it? I, I could take I could take the quarterbacks over Diami, and maybe it's not Mon. Maybe it's another quarterback. You just yeah. said it wasn't, so it wouldn't be Mon first for it, me. I mean, I get it. It's a. I know you don't like Mon, but you, it should be Mon. 
It's 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 a it's a it's a decent lazy easy way out to take the running quarterback and it and it's worked. Um, <laughs> it's worked. <laughs> Shots all right. Again. Shots but again. I'm I'm going down with this shit, man. I I don't I don't see I don't see Kellen Mont. He just he's too stiff. He makes poor decisions, and I don't like his throwing motion. And there's I mean I. He averaged three point seven yards on the ground. It's not like he was just absolutely murking people. He ran a four six four. I don't, he's not like an, a ridiculous athlete. It's not like he's a Lamar Jackson twitch kind of guy. And yes, Jalen Hurts looks awesome right now. But you probably should sell that man if you if if it was me. Oh, I mean, but that's um, what that's the name of the game. That's kind of what Big Co's saying though. The you could the the, the or the quick flip is for a, a bigger asset is around the corner if you can show that you can be a rushing threat. It's a um, rusher at a quarterback position in super flex league. I mean, you're also, gonna get paid. You're about to get paid up. Also, Mon, I, I believe in the beginning of his career was probably averaging way more rushing yards. Probably throughout his career, tried to show you that that wasn't uh, what well, was see, going on. He but averaged anyway. three point. He averaged three point eight yards a carry and seventeen three point two, and then four and four. So it actually got better as his career went on, as far as yards per average or yards per carry goes. Which I'm I'm not like a tied to yards per carry or anything like that. But in college, saying, they count the they count the sack. I don't know. Is negative. If, that's fair. Sack um, a lot. Yeah. Uh, right. Am I? Did I get that right? Did I get it wrong? I I'm not sure. Probably count it as college as a rushing attempt. Um, but like no, you know, don't. Bruce Arians was on the board and he had his choice of quarterbacks and he took Kyle Trask. I think Kyle Trask is probably the most talented guy in this group obviously Tom Brady may never retire ever so you might be waiting on Kyle Trask I think that's the quarterback I would probably take and then I, I he seems see like he's the most accurate quarterback I mean I'm definitely taking Trask over things. Mills it's not even close I think I would I mean, take David I think I would take Mills it's, it's for for me it kind of with the Mills thing it goes back to just pedigree like this is this is a just a just a pedigree kind of guy. And if yeah, he had a couple of knee injuries and only had like one really year where he was starting, but I mean, he has all the tools and, and he could develop into a really nice player too. It's just hard to get behind the Texans, but I mean, he could be playing this Texans year. Could but, ruin, well, yeah, he's going to play kinda, first. It's kind of twofold first. with that. It's the, it's the They're pedigree. It's the fact that he was, you know, five star that, you know, I've heard, uh, the coach from Stanford multiple times tell you just this guy, if he would have just had a little bit more uh, time to do what he needed to do, like, and, and, and a little bit more luck, he, he would have been absolutely a much higher pick. And the fact that he can get on, I think he, there's a decent chance that he gets on the field really quickly. Um, but I think it's going to be horrible looking. And it, maybe it's going to be a lot like people with rational minds for the way the game is played out. Like Casey, Casey's going to be sitting there saying it ain't all Davis Mills fault. Y'all boys got to do, you got to stop this and stop that. But the, the, the narrative, the national narrative, the, the people that just won't clickbait are going to talk about how bad the quarterback is when it's the team, the situation so for bad. sure. But how many times in a, in a super flex situation are you halfway through the season and you need a starting quarterback and you're willing to trade away more than you should because he's a starter and Kyle Trask isn't sniffing a start for a minute so kind of same vein of mind if he can get on the field here where kirk may you know i, I like it because kirk may only have one more year in in minnesota um so that's just kind of my thoughts on that i i do like i like kyle trask i really do and this would be a toss-up um and and in our in a league we actually traded back um to not take Kadarius Tony because we thought we could get Mon in the third round and then ended up trading and getting extra picks, getting Tony back. Um, and because we couldn't get Mon, um, and it, it happened to just work out that way. Uh, so we kind of forfeited Tony, tried to move back and get Mon. Mon went, we tried to trade for Mon, couldn't get Mon. And then we ended up the guy who got Tony from uh, pick traded us for Tony at that pick. Then we came back around, got extra picks, and picked Tony back up. So you know we kind of we were all, we were on the uh, real life situation there, and interested in Mon didn't want you know. And we had um, Kirk in that league, so that that's right. worth noting as well. But um, but back to the question of you know what skill position players would have to be gone yeah. before I start that run. I think I would take Nico Collins before any of these quarterbacks. I would probably okay. take Kenny Gainwell as well. And then, yeah, I like that. Ah, Dwayne Eskridge, I don't know. Maybe that's where I draw the line. Uh, I could take I, those I, guys. I could take all those guys after Mond before the other two quarterbacks. Okay. I like that. And I, I like Eskridge as being a decent line there. I could, I definitely would like Mond before Eskridge. 
All Nico's right. up in the air. I hate like he's big co. I think you. I hate the Nico situation. I think he could be good. Uh, you should I hate, hate everything about Houston this year, right. except for whatever running backs are going to be getting the checkdowns and the hurry up offense that they're going to be running in the middle gonna, of the second quarter. They got hundred. We got a hundred running backs. So rest so of the many. rest of the game, they're going to be down they twenty to nothing in the first game. quarter. Yeah, that's a possibility for sure. All right. Well, so that's it. That was a, that was a good conversation to have there. Um, the third round goes the three quarterbacks: Mon, Mills, Trask, Bevin, Jordan, Nico Collins, Eskridge, Gainwell, Elijah Mitchell at three eight. Love that pick. That was my pick. Holler at your boy. <laughs> Love that pick. Love that pick. <laughs> Uh, best pick of the draft. Nobody's ever made a pick like that. Nobody. <laughs> Some say it's the only pick that's ever been made. Um, but Jay so. Wayne, you took Eskridge there, so I like that. Nico Collins went right in front of you. Yeah, but um, Urban Bobcats always sniping guys. I like he took ETN up there in the first. He knew it. Yeah. So then Gamewell would have been on the board. I probably would have taken him. I would have definitely taken him in front of Mitchell, and then Mitchell went. So those are two nice picks there. Then Hawkins, uh, Stevenson from the Patriots. I'm not sure what to make of him. I'm kind of off of him. Um, but that's probably a good pick at 310. Um, then Josh Palmer. Uh, yeah. I would have taken Tylon. Then Josh Palmer at Tylen. 311. I like that move of just a good stab there. After all the receivers are gone, I'm down with stabbing there. Big Co and Jay Wayne's boy pal goes off at 312. Don't hate that. Go Tigers. Um, hey, he's a chief. You know, I don't. He's a chief, so it's a good stab. I would still. I probably just would take Tylen Wallace. You know. Then we have just the the craziest, uh, <laughs> wildest. Just what do you even know about this guy? Pick at four one, well, Jay Rice this, off the board for big <laughs> squad. He's not a rookie. <laughs> Guaranteed to get you an auto pick at least once. Big Co's good for it. That was the auto pick. Nobody knew who the fuck that was. Well, we were Why like, would he, he be was, auto picked like that because he was, he was uh, for whatever he was reason on top of the list, and he was on top of the list for a minute. And we were in the chat like someone else was about to get auto picked, and we were like, "Oh, Jared Rice is about to go." Which, if you read the last blurb on Jared Rice, he got cut by the Chargers eight months ago, so he's not even a rookie, and this is an all rookie draft, uh, and so. We were like, and then Big Co gets on the clock and the timer's ticking and we're in the chat like, oh, he's about to take Jared. Let me get him. Let me get take Jared. And then sure enough, he was on top of the list. So Big Co got out of <laughs> You heard it here first. Big Co's hot on the trails of Jay Rice. All right. So, uh, all right. That's, that's why Tyler. he got drafted. When I the, the draft that I mentioned the other day when I did the ETN and Zach Wilson thing, I got auto-picked. They got a really too fast of a clock there for a rookie draft for my taste and i got auto picked a third and a fourth round pick which could have been fantastic somebody i could have picked somebody good and i one of them the guys that they did the computer auto pick for me was jay rice he got oh. dropped drop hey when the computer sees jay rice it just it just has defaults to, to take in <laughs> to take him. how is he available <laughs> <laughs> gotta take him Got to. All right. Then Tylon goes. That's fantastic value there. I like that. What you were calling out earlier after after Gainwell and maybe Mitchell are out of there. I think I think you got to take Tylon Wallace or taking him over Hawkins in the rest of that third round. Um, then Hunter Long. I like that. And tight end premium. He was my second tight end coming into this thing. Then Des Patrick then Jefferson then Kylan Hill like that in the late fourth round after everybody's gone. I'll stab on that guy. I like him. Then S Smith from uh iowa he goes speedster he's in minnesota don't love that don't really know a ton about him then tutu atwell i think that's a great stab at four eight <laughs> by your boy again he would <laughs> <laughs> actually was just reading the names didn't even realize that i took him oh, um but then i was excited about it even more so um then dokes goes i like that stab and the fourth round ian book goes like that stab in the fourth round round tree eh, i could pass and then schwartz at 412 to round it out cleveland guy cleveland fan cleveland homer really fast guy fine with it at the uh, end of the fourth there uh anything else boys jacob harris jacob harris love scoop that. him up scoop him up big co you got anything else um i do like to two two out will pick at four eight of course he's not a necessarily a, an early target for me but um if matt stafford gets over there and crushes i'm not a usually good, a good sizes yeah. but 150 pounds right. is really hard to Jay get Wayne hung up. he's out of here 
Well, we appreciate you guys tuning in. If you like what you heard, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Hit us up with that subby. And if you're listening to us via podcast, please go over to iTunes or your platform of choice. Hit us with the five-star review. That will be just tremendous of you and much appreciated on our end. Thanks, everybody, for listening and watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.